Good evening, this is Anna Massinissa from Fabriano, Italy. Uh, thank you to Jiang Gang Drawing Painting Department for inviting me at this event today. And I also thank you, kind Commissioner of College Education, Rajasthan Jaipur, and Principal Government Arts College in Kota, and Dr. Shalini Baharti, for a conveyor of uh, Gian Gang and all her team for inviting me and um, giving me the possibility to be present in uh, today's event. Today we talk about, about expressionism in visual art. And this is a reading about visual art and art history from another perspective. And um, uh, the, the portrait you will see uh, during the slideshow of uh, my lecture belongs to uh, the artists that um, were recognized in modern art as expressionists. And this lecture task is the analysis of expressionism as an attitude of human culture being transversal to all history of art and worldwide. Um, suppose that expression is art as art is expressionism. This is our starting point. Expressionism is and was radicated in any artist. Expressionism was witness of the time, of the era, the culture, the artist belonged to, without ever prevaricating the artist himself. This is my deep uh, belief. I use as base of today overview the Wikipedia and Google shared photos, so that if you want to reanalyze on a larger range um, of art piece and artists, you can do later. Please, in your criticism, compare always with time, art movements, culture, and world areas. Actually, uh, we have to remember that in art history, expressionism is a modern movement that started in poetry and painting in Germany at the beginning of the 20th century. And its typical trait is to present the world from a subjective perspective, distorting it radically for emotional effects in order to evoke moods or ideas. This is the base philosophy of, of expressionism. And the, in the expressionist movement, artists have want to express the, the meaning of emotional experience rather than the physical reality. The movement developed as an avant-garde style before the First World War and was very popular in Berlin and all over Germany and later spread all over Europe and all over the world, we can say. The movement extended to a wide range of arts like um, architecture, painting, literature, theater, dance, film and music, all the art topics actually. And um, it is it used individual and subjective perspective as a reaction to positivism and other artistic styles that uh, were um, spreading all over Europe in those years. Um, other styles such as naturalism, impressionism, and realism. In a time and in a culture that was growing very fast and that was suddenly interrupted by the two world wars. Um, but today, let me propose you a journey to a, a collateral perspective. So let's forget for a moment about the expressionist movement. Every artwork that we will see, I ask you to please read by time, geographical area, culture, expressionism, and the artist it, it belongs to. I want to analyze on the expressionist wave some of the most famous expressionist painting in the world. So according with Google research, uh, if you search for most famous expressionist paint, uh, the results are the stars in the night by Vincent van Gogh, we go through them quite fast now, just to have uh, um, a, a wide uh, vision of, of what, what is the, the common uh, point of view. 
and the screen by Edward Munch uh, that uh, was painted in Norway uh, in a series and that is a, a way to uh, paint no more um, realism or, or, or what the reality uh, was for the artist, but to paint the art, artist's mindset, his feeling and his uh, um, mind uh, construction. And uh, this is another artwork that, that is very famous um, and it is witness of the um, expression in movement and is a study after the last, the last portrait of Pope Innocent in 1953. Francis Bacon painted it in Germany. And this is uh, another uh, testimonials of uh, expressionist artworks. And it is painted by Vasily Kandinsky in 1909 in Russia. Um, um, it, it, is, it was very evocative for color and for uh, a different uh, way to represent the form, also in landscape. And the dream by Franz Mark in Germany was painted in 1912 and gives a spiritual reaction within, within the viewers through his own eyes. But also let me add as my perspective uh, of the imp impressionist um, um, style application, Il Carro by Silvio Bellucci. He is an Italian artist who has been painting all along his life uh, as a storyteller, um, reality and dreams mixed up together as an um, this the storytelling through his uh, perspective and also very famous was Egon Schiele uh, who worked in Austria and Germany at the beginning of the century and he used to self portrait a lot as a, um, a meaning of uh, um, the point of view of the artist on what, it, what was going on around him. Another very famous artist from the expressionist movement uh, is Marc Chagall, and Chagall was very, very famous in Belarus, in Russia, and then all over Europe. He painted a lot also in Paris, like uh, um, also the ceiling of the theater, the main theater in Paris. And he used to paint figure uh, in, um, in, in, in a very uh, unrealistic style and uh, always um, constructed, constructed in a symbolism way. And maybe the most famous uh, painting, expressionist painting all over the world, the, the one that is most famous of, of all, I think, is Guernica from Pablo Picasso, and Picasso um, on the, on the um, revolutionary way, um, part of his um, uh, life when he had already uh, prevaricated the technicism uh, painting, painted uh, this painting after the Guernica, that is a, a town in Spain, was um, uh, under the bombs of the, war, the Second World War, and uh, he wanted to express uh, the, the terrible and the sadness and all the uh, hard part of the, the, the world that he had experimented uh, during, during the, um, this war. And this is another very famous um, uh, artwork uh, belonging to the uh, expressionist movement and he, it is Amedeo Modigliani and Modigliani used to paint um, a lot of portraits, a lot of uh, human figure, always uh, using um, their appearance no more uh, to paint the uh, real shape of the face of the people, the portrait of the people in their real appearance, but in, in a way that uh, could um, uh, bring to the audience uh, a mood um, often um, far, also far away from the artist himself and meaning something else about the reality of the time. 
And this is another uh, very important painting by Paul Klee in Switzerland. In, it is Castle and the Sun. The Sun, where you can see how expressionism was also applied, uh, prevaricating completely the shapes and the uh, painting of the reality, and uh, only by using colors and uh, very geometrical shapes uh, used to give mood, to give um, uh, the, the feeling of something uh, despite the, the uh, real uh, figurative uh, way. And this is also again Vasily Kandinsky, about, uh, again a Russian painter, and it is the Blue Rider and, and another very famous, very, very famous expressionist uh, painting. As most of the artwork we have seen are figurative, let now analyze some of the expressionist, um, uh, on the expressionist way, some of the most famous abstract painting. And according with Google research, most famous expressionist abstract painting, they are, and again, remember to uh, do a reading uh, by taking care of the time, the geographical area, the culture and the expressionism uh, style and the artist who, who did uh, the artworks. And again, we have Vasily Kandinsky, and um, this is composition, uh, 10th composition done in 1939, and it is com completely abstract. And you see again, uh, the, the painting has been done uh, to communicate a concept, but the concept is communicated no more by reality, by realism, or by um, uh, traditional um, painting, but the most Mostly um, uh, through uh, a balance done, done by colors and by shapes. And Piet Mondrian in 1930 um, uh, forgot completely uh, to use, um, he grew um, prevaricating completely the use of uh, figure and um, figurative uh, um, um, subject inside his painting and only um, um, giving impressions by the use of colors and the, the balance of of colors inside the uh, artwork. This is one of the most uh, famous uh, composition, red, blue, yellow, uh, white, and, um, and black that are the base color. Um, uh, and and, and th the mood must come out from the balance of those colors. And this is Joan Miro, who also was very, very famous and who again prevaricated uh, the, um, the use of fig figure and of shapes uh, and only use um, very primitive uh, signs uh, and very primitive colors to give impressions to uh, very simple lines, points, dark and lights and uh, colors. And Jackson Pollock, also was one of the uh, revolutionary uh, painting um, at the beginning of the last century, who in uh, at the beginning of the 60th century started to paint by only movement and colors on the uh, canvas, uh, who were uh, casu casually um, uh, moved on the canvas and um, casually could um, attract and um, uh, witness the mood of the artist himself. This is Mark, Mark Rockshaw uh, with um, white center, yellow, pink, and lander on rose, who painted this painting in 1950. Uh, completely um, uh, abstract and only to give uh, a side of emotion uh, to the audience. Garner Beecher, again, abstract painting uh, from 1986, again, only colors, only mood, only lights on, on a canvas. And let's now analyze on, on the moods we have received from the um, 
the history of expression in uh, either figurative or either abstract that we have seen. Let's try to analyze expression in waves on some of the important times in history of human art. We must go very fast because we don't have that, that enough time, but um, try to figure out on, uh, on the different eras, uh, the different artists have any way uh, um, witness uh, what they were asked to do and um, uh, on, on the art purpose, but how also they have witnessed their own personality as well. So the history of art focuses on objects ma made by uh, humans in visual form for aesthetic purpose. Is this all? I don't think it is. Remember um, to analyze uh, the artist by time, geographical area, culture, expressionist, and the artist himself, and try to find the art, the artist mood and the artist personality inside each piece of art that we will see. In the first period of human history, art coincided with documentation. And later, uh, documentation was achieved by um, writing, and the art remained the visual side testimonial of the times. Again, later, after photography invention, art could develop a self task, and the expression was there at, at, at any time. Those three eras, the, um, the time when art was used as um, uh, documentation, the time when art became the visual documentation, and the time when photography had gave the start to art to become uh, only a self task, uh, always keep an eye on but again always keep an eye on how strong is expression there at any time the artist expression was there at any time so this is from the very first prehistory uh, of men it's a lion man from uh, uh, 30,000 years before christ and for sure, it represented uh, uh, some the animals. It represented uh, some history the artist had and uh, experimented during his life. But don't forget to see the artist's hands, even if he was a handcraft at that time, maybe. And this is the very first uh, visual art we have in the history of man. It's cave paintings from Lascaux caves. In, those are in France, but we have many cases all over the world. And you see how much the magical hands of the artist have, have painted on, on the uh, cave um, a moment um, that he had lived in, in nature and experimenting uh, the moods of those animals. See how strong the hand of those artists are, maybe even more than one in this case. And this is another example for uh, from uh, 20,000 uh, year before Christ. It is a Venus of um, one of the, the, the very many Venus found all over uh, different cultures all over the world and represents the importance of the mother, the mother in the um, ancient time. And it's beautiful. I think it's beautiful in, in, in the way it is presented, the way the artist interpreted it. Those are again another um, sculpture uh, uh, done um, uh, in, in stone and represents two lovers. And this is, we are in another era, it is the metal, the metal age, and um, it, we are 1,400 uh, years before Christ, and this is a bronze sculpture uh, done probably uh, for uh, celebra cele celebrating some 
something important that uh, ha, uh, happened in the history of those men. And see also in this, this case, um, this is a piece of art done as a documentation, but see how much the genius, the talent of the artist, or maybe even more than one artist were working on this piece of um, art are strong and are testimonial of the period of the era the artists were belonging to. This is from the Sopotemia and again uh, watch at it with this, the same um, instruments from Sumerian, from ancient China. See, see the mood of these uh, pride warriors. Uh, he is one of the um, terracotta warriors army, uh, the famous collection uh, sculpture that uh, were found in from ancient China. See how much this uh, sculpture can um, uh, give us the impression other than how the people lived in on that time on, on the mood of this person. This is from Egypt. Again, from Egypt, and you, you uh, I can't even com co give you a comment on how beautiful they are and how the beauty from this from these artworks done from uh, these people are celebrating the art itself and the um, ability of those artists to express their time. And this is one of the masterpieces from uh, all uh, human era, um, era is uh, from Greece and it is the mask of Agamemnon. It is a mask that were put on the face of the dead warriors, the, the very famous warriors. Agamemnon was one of the most uh, important kings in the Greek time. And uh, this mask, I think it's beautiful in, in Sorry, I had lost the connection for a moment. This is from the pre-Islamic Arabia. It is again a sculpture very similar to the one you, you had seen before, but uh, there is a big difference of timing between the, the two. And this is from the Islamic time. Again, watch at the beauty uh, the hand of these artists were able to, to use in um, um, in, in this figure. And this is from the Aztec, from the South America, from the Mayan time, from the United States in Canada, the Canadian um, uh, artist, from the Indians, from the Asian art, a female st statue again. And from the Indian one uh, art, one of the main important uh, uh, god you have in India, beautiful, beautiful interpretation of the history of man up to our times, from Chinese or China, from the, the European medieval, and here we arrive to the Rhine sense. And this is the birth of Denus from Sandro Botticelli. And uh, it is uh, a storytelling from uh, the artist on a period uh, of history that was far away from the artist himself, but he has interpreting uh, by the style and by the mood, by the, the, the style of his time, the, the time he belonged to. And this is from the Romanticist period. We have a right to 1795. This is William Blake. He was a very important um, artist in, um, in England. This uh, painting was done, uh, it is print and was done by pen and ink, ink and watercolor. And we are, are again, don't forget, we are uh, coming to the art after photography invention and art could develop a self-discipline. So at the, from this moment on, you will, you can see that the style, uh, the artist, uh, artist personal style becomes uh, a lot more the witness of the feeling of the people. 
um, because the, the artist is relieved of the need to be a visualizer or, 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 or a documenter uh, about his air and can concentrate on telling his personal perspective. So even uh, during realism, that is one of the um, art movement, move, movement, the expressionist movement uh, was uh, opposite to. Um, um, you, you can see that uh, uh, even with uh, during the, the period of realism, the artist's hand is present and the artist mind and heart are, are represented in the painting. This is the Impressionism, again, it's another, uh, another of the period that are opposite to the uh, Expressionist movement, but again, here, the, the, the mood and the personality of the artist are very, very important. And we arrive now to the symbolism uh, period, and this is Gustav Klimt. He is actually one of my favorite artists all over the um, art uh, of man history, and um, he, he was exactly one of the um, artists who lived in um, um, Germ between Germany and Austria uh, during the um, Expressionist pe period. And and Gustav Klimt uh, by the symbolism and, and by becoming uh, um, not abstract but very minimal in his painting um, was one of the whole artists who best is, uh, gave the expression of the personal uh, testimony, the, the personal witness to any piece of art he, he was uh, painting, he was doing. Now, uh, let's analyze on the expressionist, uh, expressionist way six um, uh, women visual artists who, in very different times um, uh, and, and very far culture from each, uh, each other, use art as a very emotional storytelling. Uh, we go very fast because, because we are short of time, but we try to watch them and maybe you have um, um, uh, an, an idea to, uh, to give fast, uh, farther by yourself. Art is expressionism or um, better non expressionism is non-art and they are witness of this. Uh, first one I want to show you is Artemisia Gentileschi. Uh, she was an Italian uh, artist from, uh, she was born in uh, um, 1593 and she died in 1656. She, she's actual one of the first women artists in Italy. And um, she was an Italian Baroque painter and she had a very tough life. Uh, and she was in Italy working in the style of Caravaggio, but, but then she did develop a, a very strong self-style. Um, and she started painting uh, far before expressionism uh, uh, had not yet started. But you see how much in her painting um, she was using color and she was using body expression, body movement to express uh, very strongly uh, what she felt about um, uh, the connection between um, uh, the actors in, inside her painting and, and the story that she wanted to talk about. She used to, pay, to, to portrait a lot of women because she, was, she had, had a very tough st story herself with her husband, with, with her story. So she, she wanted uh, to give a, a good impression of women uh, through her art. This is Venus and Cupid. And uh, it is another very beautiful um, artwork from uh, uh, Artemisia Gentileschi and this is Salome with the head of San, Saint Joseph and um, uh, very tough and, and very chilly in the colors she has used. 
Another artist that I want you to uh, focus on is Berthe Morisot. She was um, born in, um, um, in Paris, in, in France, in, at the end of the 18th century. And this portrait of, of her is done by uh, Edouard Manet, that she was very close friend to. And uh, Berthe Morisot um, was a fresh impressionist pa painter herself, maybe on, uh, one of the very few women painters. Um, expression is, is said to be started as a reaction uh, to impressionist uh, research on only color impressions, but see how much uh, Berthe Morisot still was an, expre an ex expressionist herself. Uh, she used to paint with a uh, very chilly color, but sometimes with very hot color or mix the two of them together. So she used the color to give a lot of expression. And usually she, she was also painting a um, moment of everyday life in, in women's life and used to, um, to express farther than just the moment of life. This is Eugene Monet. He was um, Edgar Monet's father and he was married to Berthe Morisot and she painted him um, during the everyday life and giving a lot of mood again to the painting she was portraying. This is um, uh, called La Lecture, the reading. It's uh, the mother and the sister artist who were sharing some reading. Again, have a look at, at, at this uh, piece of art by the expressionist wave. I think you can see yourself how much the mood of those dark and white and the way it is uh, uh, the construction of the painting done, how much it, it expressed other, either even if in that period um, expressionist was not still born. This is another artist and she's an expressionist artist, recognized as person, expressionist artist. She's uh, Charlotte Salomon. Uh, she was born in uh, be the beginning of the 19th century in Germany and she was Jewish and um, uh, she lived in Berlin. She, um, she's uh, remembered as the creator of an autobiography series of painting and this is all, all the uh, artwork uh, she did in her life because uh, later she was murdered by um, the Nazis um, um, uh, against um, Jewish, and um, she rec she's recognized as an expressionist painter, and this is a, a self portrait, and it is expression itself. And uh, this is another another painting from a, from her uh, collection, and maybe you can see how much this uh, painting is very close to the Marc Chagall painting that we have been seeing before, with those figures that that seems to be uh, flying in in the air and the color and the, not at all attention to the traditional um, um, uh, law of um, uh, driving and painting, but rather than to give in, an impression uh, and sentiment about something that was happening to her uh, life. Again, another artwork from Sh Charlotte Salomon. And now we arrive to Frida Kahlo. She's uh, um, an, an artist who told about herself, I thought I was a surrealist too, but I never was. I've always painted my reality and not my dreams. This says a lot about herself giving a, a lecture of herself as um, a, a, a mood painter, so an expressionist painter at all. She was uh, born and died in Mexico at the beginning of the 19th century. She was never rec recognized as an expressionist painting, but she was um, on any side of her, her, her job. 
And this is one of the, the self-portrait uh, Frida Kahlo did, did of herself. She, she, was, um, uh, she had many accidents in her life, so she stayed in hospital many times. And by this painting, she probably wanted to tell about the suffering on her body from one of the accidents she had. And again, here, uh, this is a self-portrait uh, with Diego in her mind. Diego was Diego Rivera, one of the very most famous uh, painters in uh, Mexico at the beginning of the century. And she was married to Diego Rivera for, for a period. And she, um, uh, she was portraying herself while thinking of him. And this is another self-portrait of Frida Kahlo. She used to paint about herself a lot, uh, involved inside uh, some different or, mm, mood, uh, moods and some different uh, happening of, on her life. And this is Emily Carr who was born in 1871 and in, um, in, Fran in France, but then she lived all her, her life in Canada. So she is um, uh, recognized as one of the most famous painter in Canadian art at the beginning of the century. And she used to paint a lot about the um, uh, local uh, artists and the local, the local history. This is a, to a totem that she had in the forest just close to her house. This is another city of, of totem. And again, you see that um, she was considered to be an impressionist, but actually she was not an impressionist, same as uh, um, uh, Frida Kahlo and the other artist, artists, we saw she was rather a, per, a, a painter who was using her painting to um, uh, as a storytelling about her moods and about her own reality. And finally, I want you to uh, focus on Tina Modotti. She was a photographer. Uh, she also was an actress and uh, revolutionary, very revolutionary political activist in, um, in Mexico um, during all her life. But she was all, most of all a great photographer and she used uh, she used photography in a time when photography was uh, still documentation and she started to use it a, a lot more as um, a testimony and as a witness of the women in, um, in Mexico during uh, her period. This is another uh, piece of art she did, uh, again, by photography, and this the hands of the puppetes, and it is uh, still in Mexico City where she was born and died. We have arrived to the end. In conclusion, I hope that the meaning of today's reading is clear. Art and the artist talent are dominant over any filter. This is my strong belief. Even when in the hands and in the sensibility of the artist lies the responsibility of documentation, of documenting, the personal expression of the art is there. Expression is present to witness the time, the culture, the geographical area, but most of all the artist whose hands have created the artwork. This is all I wanted um, uh, to read together with you today. So I thank you again, you all for your attention and keep an eye on art as expression because this is the big gift we get from art possibility. <laughs>